Missed. No, I think you got him. I think you got him. He just went down. Alright guys, welcome back to Whitetail Bushcraft Outfitters. As you can see, Sean definitely got his squirrel, so we kind of set up a temporary base camp and we're going to cook you up a nice historical dish. Dates back to 1742. So hang in there and uh, we'll get this thing all ready to go. Alright, what this uh, dish consists of, it's a uh, very historical dish. The first published recipe book in the colonies of the United States was in 1942 and it was called The Art of Cookery. And this recipe was in it. It's called Brun uh, Brunswick Stew, which the main ingredients is squirrel. And uh, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams was supposedly their, one of their favorite dishes. It's just something we want to show you, and it's kind of a historical dish. We're going to put a little twist to it to of ourselves, but we got some stuff out of the garden today and a few things out of the store. Uh, what it consists of is uh, squirrel, some potatoes. I'm going to use bouillon cubes for my chicken broth. Some tomatoes. We got a pepper out of the uh, garden also. Onion corn out of the garden, and also, you did buy these, so, some lima beans. It's one of the main things to give it its flavor is the lima bean. It's a little different, but this is called Brunswick Stew. So I'm going to start uh, processing everything, and we'll start cooking it up for you. First thing I like to do is quarter it up. And we'll end the, uh, recipe it does show where they'll uh, cook this up and then shred the meat but I kind of like to leave it rustic more where you got it quartered and then I kind of shred the uh, main body part from there one. now this is for two people you know they they showed six squirrels um, there's only just me and Sean today so I'm not going to make a whole bunch of waste a bunch of one time so we got our squirrel it up. Letting my coals get real good here. There's a part in, uh, the, if you guys are familiar with the book Woodcraft and Camping, there's a part where Nesmic kind of makes fun of the youngsters where they'll they have fires large enough to melt their cast iron pots and the wood handles off their teapots and stuff. So just kind of one thing that's kind of funny in that book where you want hot coals is the main thing. You don't want to have a raging fire when you're cooking. And when it comes to cooking outdoors, you know, it's, there's no time limits. When it's done is when it's done. So let me get the rest of this going. We'll show you how we cook this up. So hang in there with me, guys. All right, guys. The first thing you want to do is kind of what I do is flour. Bring some flour in a baggie. I flour up the meat. And then, of course, you guys remember my little trick with the flasks. They're worthless for water. They're great for booze, but they're also great to keep oil, cooking oil and olive oil and such, in your uh, in a flask for when you're out camping or hiking, trekking, whatever you guys are doing. Just enough to keep that going. And I'll start processing out the vegetables also once I get this stuff seared in. Alright guys, hang in there, I'll let you know when it's ready for the, uh, the oil's just right and we'll put the meat in there. Alright guys, our oil's just right. Start throwing in the pieces of squirrel. Now in the uh, original recipe for Brunswick stew, they didn't flour and uh, pre-cook it like this. I like to do that just because I think it gives it a better taste. That changes it up a little bit, but it's still going to boil down to Brunswick stew. They would also add uh, pork into this, but I'm not going to do that because I want to kind of concentrate on a game dish where it's mainly squirrel. Using my spoon that I made.
we also put two of the corn right in the fire. I always like the corn right off the fire here. Do it already, guys. Ooh, look at that. What is starting to get a nice golden brown to it. that cook for a while and I'm going to start processing out the vegetables. So hang in there with us. I wash the skins. I like the skins and all guys on the potatoes. I think that's where all the nutrients are. It just gives it a more rustic flavor to me. Okay. Potatoes. I'm going to go ahead and I broke down my uh, chicken stock, the bouillon cubes. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in. I want about two cups. You can always add more water because I put all the old bouillon cubes in there at once. half an onion on this one since it's a smaller uh, setup. Make sure my corn's not burning. Now we're into the hot coals. Okay. yellow onion out of the garden. Notice I'm using a different cutting board, guys. I used a wood plank for cutting up the uh, squirrel, but I went ahead and used it for firewood, too, because I didn't want to get that all over the vegetables. Onions go right in there. That's smelling good. Okay. Got green pepper. I think I'm just going to use half of a green pepper for this also. The smoke's getting right in my eyes. Follows me. Now this is a vet recipe you'd want to make back at base camp. Not something really out in the wild. I don't know if you'd want to pack a cast iron in and everything else while you're out trekking. There goes my phone. Get back to that. 
That was the green pepper. Now we're going to put a tomato in there. So, turn it into more like a stewed tomato. They probably blanched and skin theirs, but I like the skin and all. Is that looking good, guys? Just the colors alone. But now, we're going to add one of these corn in there. Nice fresh corn. Excuse my phone. Process the corn out. I think I'm going to do that right in the fire. Since this one's got a nice handle. Fresh corn. Okay. And we can't forget, I wish I could have grown my own, we can't forget the lima beans because that's one of the main ingredients to the recipe. If you guys want to look it up, it is called Brunswick Stew. And some lima beans. I think that ought to do it. We don't want to overpower too much. Mix that all up. Oh, and I don't want to forget hillbilly spices. What I got guys is what's nice about harvesting them ramps in the springtime. The whole idea is to be able to use them in a later date. I'm going to put them in whole. These are dehydrated uh, leeks or ramps, whatever you'd like to call them. They got that garlicky onion smell. I'm going to throw them in there. And then I got a mixture of uh, seasoned salt, parsley, pepper, garlic powder, things like that, just to add it up a little bit. I'll throw that right in there. I'm going to add a little more water to that, guys, because that's going to cook down some. guys take a look at that that looks good just pull some corn in the coals let the corn with it one in the flames out well guys we'll let this cook and when it's time to eat we'll get back with you I'm gonna put the cover it up for now we'll let her do some cooking guys let's see how this is coming along oh yeah it's looking good man I wish you guys could smell it once again this is a historical dish called Brunswick stew I think I may have said the wrong date it's actually was in the first published recipe book in the United States colonies there's a lot of people that claim the fame of it, but it was ninth or exactly it was actually 1742 was the first published recipe book, and it was called the Art of Cookery. But you can see that squirrel in there, all the lime.
my beans and the corn. It's almost done, guys. Just thought I'd give you a good little peek at it. I might want to get a close up on that. See our corn's cooking also. Almost there, guys. We'll be back with you when we're time to eat. Alright, guys, this is done. Me and Sean's going to get us something to eat, and I want to give you guys a view of it with the, what it looks like done. Yeah, it does look good, guys. I wish there was some smell of vision so you could smell it. I don't know if you guys can see all the color contrast with all the different vegetables and such. But uh, I'm going to set this back so we, we can start dishing it out. Sean's already ready to eat. <laughs> All right, guys, time to eat. Yeah, we put some uh, corn on the cob right in the fire, in the hot coals. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Best way to make corn. Yeah, that corn. is the best way to make corn, guys. Just wish we had some uh, bushcraft butter to dip it in. first he's not much of a pepper guy he likes more of the potatoes and the corn make sure he gets a nice piece of the squirrel All right, guys. I'll show you a close-up of that. Don't look too bad. Thickened up real nice. You can see the big old strap of squirrel in there. How is it, Sean? Pretty good. I gotta try it yet. <laughs> Nice cool day today. I think we're only going to have a high of uh, 68 here in Ohio. Right now it's probably about 62. It's just perfect outside. No mosquitoes. It's good uh, comfort food here. Oh, son, you don't get no better than that. That's good stuff. Um, just wanted to cook you up a historical dish. Brunswick stew is what it's called. Potatoes, corn, tomatoes, um, squirrel, of course, lima beans, some pepper, onions, and then your spices that you like, you know, spice to your liking. Then uh, we did the corn too, just to give it a little extra. How's that? Pretty good. 
good corn. That's that real good smoky flavor when you put it into the coals. Good way to do it is just let the cob and husk and all soak overnight in water. That way when you put them in the coals, it's not going to burn up. It'll be nice and steamy for you. But I'm going to get back to this squirrel stew. That there is my favorite. A nice big old piece of squirrel, kind of makes it a little more rustic. Nothing like gray squirrel, guys. Mm, very good. That's a good way to tender it up, too, by doing it in a stew. Once again, guys, I'd like to thank you for joining us over here at Whitetail Bushcraft Outfitters. Next Saturday, I'll be in the woods about 5 o'clock in the morning. Hopefully, I'm going to get me a deer. Hopefully, Sean might get him a deer. But it starts the 24th of September this month. So, we probably got about eight days, I'm guessing, next weekend. So, we'll definitely be there. See you on the next video, guys. Cheers. Thanks for uh, being here with us. Take care.